Hey guys, welcome back to another teeth review lesson. Today we are going to look at the respiratory system. And you are expected to know the different parts of the system, the function for each part, some of the common problems associated with the respiratory system, and also how the respiratory system and the circulatory system interact with one another. The respiratory system is a system that supplies oxygen to the entire body, right? Because it contains a bunch of tubes and the lungs so when you inhale you take in air which is rich in oxygen when and when you exhale you dispose of the carbon dioxide the the air that you exhale is rich in carbon dioxide now there are four processes in respiration you do not need to memorize these four processes i just want to list them there and kind of go over the steps with you so that you're familiar with how the respiratory system works. The first step is a pulmonary ventilation. This is basically breathing. The second step is external respiration. So this happens at the lungs and you can really think of it as gas exchange at the lungs. And we'll explain what exactly happens at the lungs during external respiration. Why it's called external? That's because your lungs are connected to the external environment, right? Through the respiratory tract. So that's external respiration. Next step, the blood is going to uh, transport the oxygen that the blood picks up at the lungs to the body, right? To deliver the oxygen to the cells and then pick up the carbon dioxide from the cells. So that's the transport. The last step is internal respiration. And the internal respiration is, again, it's gas exchange, but this time it happens at the tissues. The blood brings in oxygen and the cells will pick up oxygen, but the cell will also drop off carbon dioxide, which is picked up by blood. So after the internal respiration, the good blood, which is the oxygenated blood, now becomes the bad blood, deoxygenated, very low in oxygen level. There are quite a few structures in the respiratory system. We're going to look at the upper respiratory system first, and we'll just kind of really follow the pathway for air when you inhale. So the air is going to go through nasal cavity first, right? So the nasal cavity uh, it's going to warm up, moisture and filter air, right? You have nose hair in the nasal cavity. You also have mucus, so that can filter the air. After the nasal cavity, air will go through pharynx, which is commonly known as the throat. When you look at pharynx, there are two subdivisions, nasal pharynx, oral pharynx, and laryngeal pharynx. I do not think you need to memorize all the three subsections. Just know that after the nasal cavity, air is going to go through the pharynx, which is the throat. And the pharynx is shared by the respiratory system and the digestive system. Digestive system. So food also goes through the pharynx. Now, in the pharynx, there are a few structures. You can see uvula. When you open your mouth really wide, you can see a little kind of structure hanging from the roof of your mouth, right? That's uvula. Now, when you swallow, uvula is going to kind of move up and it's going to block the pathway to your nasal cavity. So you don't get food going into your nose. The next structure is called epiglottis. So epiglottis is over here. When you swallow, epiglottis is going to come down and close the pathway to the trachea so you don't get food down your respiratory tract right down your windpipe after pharynx air is going to go through larynx which is the, the section over here so the larynx is known for speech right? it's got the voice box um, it generates speech now we're moving on to the lower respiratory system which which starts at the trachea so this is the trachea. You can see there are um, a lot of kind of ring-like structures which are made of uh, cartilage. So those ring-like structures will prevent the trachea from collapsing. So that, here, that keeps your airway open so the air can enter the lungs. After trachea, uh, you're going to have two 
bronchi, bronchi. So the singular is bronchus. Each bronchus will go into each lung, right? So this is going to be the right bronchus. It will uh, bring air to the right lung. Right now in the lungs, you can see the bronchi are going to branch off to smaller tubes and they're called the bronchioles, bronchioles. And eventually at the end, you are going to have alveoli, alveoli. So alveoli are the primary site for gas exchange. Um, they look like clusters of grapes. So basically they're just kind of air sacs. And then we'll talk about alveoli in a second. The right lung has three lobes and is slightly bigger than the left lung. And that's because the heart is slightly more to the left side, right? So that gives more space to the right lung. Uh, and for both lungs, they are surrounded by a double membrane structure called a pleura. pleura. So what happens is it looks like this. Let's say this is the lung, right? And then you have, let me use a different color. Let's say uh, this is the pleura, but remember pleura has two layers, right? So you can have, oops, you're gonna have a one layer and then there's going to be another layer. There is a very small space, which is called the pleural space. The pleural space has a fluid called a pleural fluid. So the pleural fluid really kind of provides a lubrication so that when the lungs um, deflate and inflate and moves, they, they move around, right? So the pleural fluid can reduce the friction and provides lubrication. Okay, last the structure, alveoli. Alveoli, like I said, that's the main site for gas exchange. And that's what they look like, like clusters of grapes. So these alveolar sacs are surrounded by capillary beds. Basically, you know, a bunch of very small blood vessels. So what happens is the, um, over here. So when you inhale, you know, the air is going to go through all those structures in respiratory tract and then trachea, bronchioles, and then alveoli, right? So you have a fresh air going into these air sacs and they are high in oxygen level and low in carbon dioxide level, right? Oh, I probably should use a different color. Well, I'm going to use purple for blood vessels. Um, and these alveoli are surrounded by capillary beds, right? So I'm just going to draw one uh, capillary as an example. Okay, so let's say this is a, a capillary. Okay, all right. And then in the capillary, you have a blood. Okay, now remember the blood that goes into the lungs comes from the right ventricle, the right ventricle. And the blood is low in oxygen and high in carbon dioxide because, because the blood has just completed the systemic circuit, right? So that's the bad blood. So as the blood kind of uh, flows kind of past the alveoli, there's going to be diffusion. So that's the movement of molecules from higher concentration area to low concentration area okay so the blood has low oxygen but high carbon dioxide so as a result let me use a different color oxygen molecules are going to move from high concentration to low concentration right so oxygen is going to move from alveoli to blood and then carbon dioxide is going to move the opposite direction, right? It's high in blood, but low in alveolar sacs. So carbon dioxide is going to move out of blood into the, alveol uh, into the alveolar sacs. And eventually, the carbon dioxide will be exhaled out your body. And so that's kind of the basic uh, process for gas exchange happening at alveoli. Now, alveoli, um, these little, this, air sacs are bathed in surfactant. So surfactant is really kind of a mixture of lipid and fat. Uh, and the, the function is to prevent collapsing when you exhale. Uh, so the air sacs don't just collapse and, you know, which could present serious problems. Uh, how does gas exchange work? We mentioned that uh, it's really kind of based on the principle of diffusion. Oxygen and carbon dioxide, those molecules will move from high concentration to low concentration. 
and again we talk about with where is high where is low right so let me just do that one more time if, if you already know this stuff you can skip it alveoli high in oxygen low in carbon dioxide and when you look at blood low in oxygen but high in carbon dioxide right so the oxygen is going to move into the blood so that's oxygen and the carbon dioxide is going to move out of blood into alveoli and then carbon dioxide is going to leave our body through exhalation all right now after the lungs after the gas exchange at the lungs now the blood is going to be changed from the bad blood to the good blood and the good blood is going to go back to the left atrium right and then it's going to get it's going to move into left ventricle and it's going to start the systemic circuit all right now the TIS study manual does mention some of the factors involved in diffusion so besides concentration gradient there are also some other factors that may influence the process such as surface area right the more surface area you have the more diffusion can take place. The next factor is the distance where the molecules have to travel. So if it's a shorter distance, then that will facilitate diffusion. So it's easier for the molecules to travel.